Now that we have discussed about graphical representation of motion, let's explore how equations of motions can be derived from these graphs. These equations of motions are valid only when acceleration is constant and motion is constrained to a straight line. These equations can be used to describe the motion of an object in terms of its three kinematic variables velocity v, position s and time t. There are three ways to pair them up. Velocity time, position time and velocity position. In this order, they are also often called the first, second and third equations of motion. First equation of motion. The relation between velocity and time is a simple one during uniformly accelerated straight line motion. The longer the acceleration, the greater the change in velocity. Change in velocity is directly proportional to time when acceleration is constant. If an object already started with a certain velocity, then its new velocity would be the old velocity plus this change. We define acceleration as change in velocity over time. It is the slope of line on the velocity time graph. U is the initial velocity of the car. V is the final velocity of the car. Change in velocity is V minus U. This change occurred in time t. So, slope of the line can be defined as change in the velocity divided by time. Rearranging the equation gives you the first equation of motion v is equal to u plus at. Final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus acceleration into time. Second equation of motion. The displacement of a moving object is directly proportional to both velocity and time. Move faster, go farther. Move longer, as in longer time. From the graph, it is equal to the shaded area. The shaded area is the sum total of rectangle and triangle. Area of rectangle is u into t, that is initial velocity multiplied by time. Area of triangle is the product of half the time and change in velocity. From the first equation of motion, we know that acceleration is equal to difference of final and initial velocity and time. Replacing this relation into our equation gives us the equation to calculate distance s s equal to u multiplied by t plus half acceleration multiplied by time squared. This is second equation of motion. Third equation of motion. The first two equations of motion each describe one kinematic variable as a function of time. 1. Velocity is directly proportional to time when acceleration is constant, v proportional to t. Displacement is proportional to the time squared when acceleration is constant, delta s proportional to t square. Combining these two statements gives rise to a third, one that is independent of time. Displacement is proportional to velocity squared when acceleration is constant, delta s proportional to v square. This statement is particularly relevant to driving safety. When you double the speed of a car, it takes four times more distance to stop it. Triple the speed and you will need nine times more distance. Let's derive this equation from the graph. As we know, area of shaded region is the distance covered. Area of trapezoid is half product of the sum of parallel sides and distance between the lines. We will use the first equation of motion and then replace t with equivalent value. This gives us the third equation of motion. v square is equal to u square plus 2 into acceleration into distance. v is the final velocity, u is the initial velocity, a is the acceleration, s is the distance or displacement. We discussed graphical method to derive equation of motions. Take this challenge. Person races a bike from rest and accelerates to 60 km per hour in 10 seconds. How far person travels in those 10 seconds? 